<laughs> Loud and clear. Sorry. Lots of people want to do when you have the new bus stop. They're Jesus. Yeah. 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 He's going to run or they're going to rise. You know, all these people looking for two and three to one of God's. Yeah. They're in trouble. According to the Word of God, he plainly said, if you don't believe, who can I say that I am your Daniel Sanders? Right. Now, boy, that's something to think about. Right. Being trouble. You know, thank God. And I want to praise him. Because the other morning, before I woke up, the Lord started speaking to my heart. I love it when He does that. Amen. If you will go to Proverbs chapter uh, chapter twenty-seven, and verse two, it says a mouthful. We start verse four. Proverbs 27, verse 1 says this. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Okay. Let another man praise thee, and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I give you glory. Ask you, Lord God, as I go into this word, Lord God, that you would help me, Lord God, to speak what thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And, Lord God, I give you honor, I give you praise, and I give you glory for it in Jesus' name. You know, as I began to think about of what Proverbs says there, said, let another mouth that, that praise you. And not your own, I began to think about all these people that think they're a little bit better than somebody else. Right. And, you know, as I began to sit and think about that, you know what, no matter what church you go into, you know that, that, that there's a respecter of person. And you know what? They would prefer some people above other people. You know, I began to sit and think about how how that some people you could come into this church, or not this church, but church in general. You know, if you see a person come through at this door with a three-piece suit on with a Bible under the arm, now they're going to grab that man and they'll bring him all the way up and set him on that front pew. But yet you see somebody walk into the church house with tattoos all over them. Oh, you know what? Not looking the way that people think that they should look. Oh, they were sitting there hide them back in a corner somewhere where nobody else can see them. You know, the Bible says if we're respecter of this person, then that's a sin. That's right. You know what? We're not supposed to be respecter of person. No, sir. Because you know what? You all put your preachers on just like I do. You know what? There ain't a one of us better than the next. But you know what? If you go on over in the loop, there's another story that I really, really love. You go over into Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Start about the 10th verse. The word says this. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within with himself. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice a week. I give tithes all that I possess. The publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes into heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down into the house justified rather than the other, for every one that exalt himself shall be abased, and he that humble himself shall be exalted. Yeah. You look up the word abased, and that means to be knocked down a few notches. So you know what? If you get out here and you think you're better than somebody else, God's going to knock you down a few notches. Right. You know what I began to sit and think about how that we walk in this, we live in this world. You know what? You've got the rich. You've got the poor. You two, you had the middle class. 
There ain't no such thing that now as the working poor. Oh, but you know what? There's so many people. The rich think that they're better than the poor. And you know, I was, I was raised in the church house. I started there at about nine years old. And I left there when I was 30. In that church house, you walked in there. They had $500 suits on. The women had diamonds on every single finger. They had the best of the best. You know what? So people that were, that were poor wouldn't go to that church because they didn't feel like they was worthy of walking into that house. I said, you know what? I believe. I said, you know what? That's filthy lucre is all that is. Yeah. Because you know what? Whenever you said faith, that, or that your clothes and all of your possessions and what all you got is better than what the poor people out here are. You've lost your vision. And you know what? You need to go back to the altar and pray. Because I'm telling you what, there's too much respect for pe people in the church houses anymore. Crazy, right, I'm going to use you as an example. Let's say that me and Tracy went over to the park. I sang and Tracy preached. Same day, we put that in the newspaper. Linda Gibson goes and says that she's going to be over in the same place at the same time. How many people do you think is going to come and listen to me and Tracy? That's right. How many people Good you think Good. that you even go to church with are going to come and listen to me and Tracy. That's right. You know what? I don't care how good you sing. I don't care how good that you can play. You know what? If you ain't got the anointing inside of it, hey, it ain't a bit of good. No good. You know what? You got these people out here. They got their hair teeth plumb up to her. And they got all them. They got the big fancy clothes. And they got their big fancy suits. And they get up here and they go. And they get on the television. And they become televangelists. And you know what? They get up there. And they sit and they rob every single poor person. Out there. And they can use every penny you got to support them. And so they can get them another airplane. Or they can get them another dress. Or they can get them another suit. Uh, but you know what? Uh, uh, those kind of people, uh, they better be really, really careful. Because uh, uh, whenever they uh, quit worrying about uh, their lost souls out there, uh, they're dying and going to hell uh, and put their mind uh, on what they can let. They're going to be right in hell with the same people right. that they rejected. Right. Amen. Amen. That was a mouthful. That was a good mouthful. But I tell you what, I've seen it all my life. Praise God. I've seen it all my life. I've seen preachers get up, dance to dance, speak the word, prophesy, speak in tongues without an ounce of anointing in it. Right. Yeah. I see people get up and get on the piano, sit and play just like Jerry Lee Lewis, yeah. or get up here and sing like Dolly Parton. It's not got a bit anointing in them. No, Tell you what I would rather be in an old-fashioned church house yeah. with 10, 15 people yeah. that truly love God, yeah. that has a pasture, yeah. that truly worries about their souls, that ever been in a place uh, where people uh, are just pushing under, uh, up and under all these little old yeah, bushes yeah. Up, up behind things, uh, uh, you know, put out of the way. Uh, you know what? When I was young, I was in this church one time, and I want to tell this. We had a person come to our church. That church separated the women on one side, the men on the other side. Behind the pulpit. The center people were set out here. The safe people set up here. This big important person was coming that was over all the churches. And the pastor, right in front of the entire church, turned his back around and looked and pointed right at a woman sitting in that pew. Said, Let me in your chair, you sit back in the back corner because your hair is too short and we don't want you to shame this church. You know what? That 
man needs to get saved. Because let me tell you what, when you worry about what somebody else thinks, instead of the soul or one of your members, right. you know what, you need to go and find, find a home or somewhere. Because yeah. you know what, your love is gone. Because right. you know what, like we was talking away here, you can't be a man pleaser. Yep. You've got to please God. Yeah. You know what, you can't go out here and try to hide from people. You know what, this body here, this body that we got, in the full body, you know what we got our fingers and our toes. You know our body becomes it's all one thing. It all works together. Right. But you know what this body also has uncomely parts. You know what? So somebody in the church is not going to be just as perfect as you think that they're supposed to be. But let me tell you what, even though they're not as perfect as what you think they should be, you still got to love them. And you still got to teach them. And you still got to tell them the truth. Amen. That's right. Not hide them. That's good, brother. I just don't understand that. Because you know what? There's always a pecking order. You know what? You got these people that's up here. You got these people that's down here. And you got these people that's in the middle. And you know what? Those people that's up here are all the time trying to rule and control all these people down here. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I, I can guarantee you one thing. I'm 100% homeless from the tip top of my head to the very soles of my feet. And I believe in a standard. But you know what? I will not hurt somebody's feelings because of what I believe. You know what? If I've got the word to back it up, I'll preach that word. Right. But you know what? For me to go and pick you out and take pink on you because you're not living up to a standard huh, that I think that you should. Huh, you know what? I'm in the wrong. Huh, I'm not you. Huh, you know what? If you get out there huh, and you hurt people, huh, uh, you know what? You ain't doing a bit of good. Right. You can't be no respecter of person. I don't care. I've been in church where people got up, like I told you, and sung. That was so beautiful with no anointing. You know, I've also been in the church house where a person has got behind sacred desk and began to sing, cutting current tune in a water bucket. But I tell you what, that one song, they cut and keep a tune in a water bucket. Their song was ten times better than they ever said everybody else's in earth. Because I tell you what, I don't care how bad you work for God. If you're doing your best, that's all that matters. And you know what? Just because, you know, just because you don't like to hear it or you don't like to listen to them, that don't mean that they're not right. That's right. Amen. There's too much pushing people out the door. Yep, that's your good. I've seen it all my life. Yeah. People being a respecter of person. You know what we can't be? No. We cannot be. You know what? We gotta love everybody. Right. We respect the person we the devil. Right. What's the word say? So we got to love our neighbor right. as ourself. That's right. How can you love your neighbor as yourself if you think you're better than them? Right. right. The last time I checked, you gotta let the wheat and the turn. Grow together. You've got to go and live salvation for yourself. You can't work out my salvation. I can't work out yours. You know the word said that judge not that you be not judged. So you know what? Before you get out here throwing off on somebody and judging them, you better be real, real careful. Because you know what? If you live as a judge in this earth, Whenever you die and you stand before God, you're going to be judge as a judge. So you know what? You better be real careful when you get out here and judge somebody. Because you know what? None of us is better. We ever one got to endure to the very end. Because you know if we don't endure to the very end, we ain't going to make it. Right. You go and you walk 99 miles out of 100 and you walk off the road, you're going to hell. There ain't no playing around with it. People think once I'm saved, I'm always saved. No matter what I do, I'm still saved. You show me Bible for that. 
The Bible says there's endurance. You've got to endure. Endure to the end. Right. And there's a lifestyle you've got to live. That's right. You know what? There's a way of life that you've got to live. And you do got to come out of this world and be separated from everybody else. Right. You know what? That's Just right. because everybody wants to gather into a little group and throw off on somebody don't mean that we got to break our neck and put our two cents in it. That's right. That's the problem with churches. There's too much flap in their jaws. Yeah. I said it a hundred times, I'd say. Instead of be flapping and gossiping, we should be at the altar praying before church. That's right, brother. Because you know what you'll find out real quick? A praying church is going to stand through the troubles. It'll stand through the trials. Stand. If you've got a true love in your heart for your brothers and sisters, like I said the other day about the spaghetti, we're like that spaghetti. We bind together. You know what? We help out each other. But you know what? How am I going to help out my brother if I think I'm better than Tracy? Or I think I'm better than Don? Or Charlie? Or Albert? Or any of y'all? How do you think that you're ever going to accomplish anything? Right. And you don't think for one second that you think you're better than I am. No matter how you good, how good you are in my face, my spirit, that little Holy Ghost thing on inside here, tell on it. Tell on it. Yeah, it will. You know what? You'll be known by the fruit you bear. Yeah, that's a bird. Yeah. You'll be known by the fruit you bear. Right. And no matter how much you tell me that you love me. If your actions don't prove it, That's right. you're a liar. Amen. Not only have you lied to me, you've lied to God. Right. Because you know what? We're, a, we're one big family. Yeah. <laughs> we're all brothers and we're all sisters. Here we are. You know, like with any family, you all time, you know, sometimes you have little conflicts, but you know what? You're still family. Just because you have conflicts don't mean you can't talk your way through it and go on. I but you know what? People want to puff up. Well, they didn't let me sing. They didn't let me preach. How come he gets to get up there and preach and won't let me preach? You know what that's called? Childish. Childish. That's what I did. But you know, I prefer my brothers. I do. I mean, if, if, if they have a word to preach, go and preach. But you know what? If God wants me to preach, I'm going to preach. Right. But you know what? If my brother wants, if my brother's got a word, I'll sit on my seat. That's, right. That's where we got to be. Right. But you know what? Some people wants to be the head macho. Yeah. They want to be the number one singer. They want to be the number one preacher, the number one piano player, right. the number one guitar player. And they want everybody walk up and pat them on the back and say, "Boy, you said you did a good job. Yeah. You showed me a good job." That's what people want. That's what they, want. they want to be bragged on. Yeah. You know what? If you're looking for glory down here, you might as well forget the glory of yeah. Because you've already got your reward. Yeah. And I wish this hit my mind. I wish people would take I out of their sermons. Yeah. yeah. If they say I, they better, better put an I am on it. Only I we ever should talk about behind the pulpit is I am. I am. Yeah. Right. And you know what? So many people want to get up and say, well, I did this. I did that. You know what? We're less than an ant on the bottom of an elephant's foot. Right. We are no work compared to what God is. That's right. You know what? Whenever we get up here, we put ourselves above right. our brothers and sisters. How long do you think it's going to be before we put ourselves above God? There you go. You know what happened the last time in, in the Word of God? What happened when you put yourself above God? Yes, sir. That king got eaten by worms. Yeah. Because he did not give God the glory. Yes, I don't care what you can do. I don't care if you can prophesy. I don't care if you can lay hands on a sick and they recover. I don't care if you can get out here and you can do all these things. You know what? You better give God the glory first. Yeah, you know, I see too many people say, well, I did this and I did that. You know what? All I did was sit and did what God told me to do, and he was faithful. 
and he's the one that done it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody say one time that they saved them from under the pews. The number one thing, no man saved me. That's right. That's right. Nobody saved me but God. But right. people wants to go and they say, well, I, I got to baptize this many people. I got to go out there and all these people went to the altar. We need to get an eye off of it. Because you know what? God adds to the church daily yes, right. as he sees fit. Right. It's nothing to do with us. Right. But he said that if we would draw nigh to him, that he would draw nigh to us. If we lift him up, he's going to draw people to him. Yeah. So you know what? You get into the work, you get into the church house. And you start lifting up the name of God, you're going to see souls come through the door. Amen. You're going to see, it's just like a light shines out of the church house, just like a beacon. Just like a skeeter or a moth. It'll go to a flame. Yeah. So you know what? Whenever the Holy Ghost is moving in the church house and God is being lifted up, it will draw people into that church. Yeah. And you know what? It will draw the right kind of people. Sir. You can get anybody you want to to pull them into the church house. But until God adds them to the church house, it ain't doing going to be a good a bit of good. Because right. you start pulling them in, you're going to get gossipers. You're going to get Betty better than you. Right. Linda shouts better than you. All these people want to be gossip hounds. Talk about how they did this and they did that and they did this and they did that. We need to be humble, people. We need to humble ourselves down. Because you know, if God has blessed you with a gift, keep it on the down low. Don't go around and put yourself above somebody else right. because they can't do it. Because right. you know what? That person you don't think can do it, God might bless them with a bigger job than what you've got right. and a greater job than what you've got. Amen. God's looking for people that are willing to work for him. Yes. He don't want no high-minded people. Right. He don't want nobody that's going to take his glory. No, you know, all the way through the word of God, you go through that Old Testament, and one of God's biggest peace was to put no gods before me. Because yep. he said, I, my name is Jealous, for I am a jealous God. Yeah. Right. Whenever you put yourself in front of God, you're making yourself out of a God. Yes, sir. People might not believe that, but they are. And I know a lot of people I've heard preachers say with their own mouth that they're God. Yep. Oh, Lord. Or they're going to forgive you of your sins. I don't know where people get this stuff at. But all I know is they need to get back into the Word of God. And they need to get back up to the altar and get saved because they have been misled somewhere. But we have got to love each other. Like I said, you know what? We're like a big dysfunctional family sometimes. But you know what? We're still a big family. And we got to love each other. Yeah, man. Because I tell you what, what good is being in a church with a bunch of people that if you get sick, you ain't got enough faith in them to pray for you to be healed. You know how sad that is? That'd be sad, yeah. But have a church full of people that you have no faith in. Yeah. It's sad. But we got to love each other. We can't be no respect for a person. Because if we are, we have sin. You know, there's a love that's called the agape love in the Greek, which is sacrificial love. That's the love that Jesus had when he sacrificed his life for us. Yes, sir. You know, I began to think today, it hit my mind about Jesus. Jesus could and still can do all things. Not one time did he rise above anybody else and bragged about what he could do. 
He kept it down humble. He kept himself humble. Even though he could do all these things, he never held it above nobody's head. So you know what? That's the way that we need to be. We need to love each other and just go on. Because I'll tell you what, time's running out. And if we don't find a place in the Lord but there's peace in our hearts and minds instead of strife and bitterness. When the troubles and trials and heartaches begin, we might not make it. You know, mommy, all the time we as kids, she had all the troubles, trials, and tribulations. I talked about that all the time when I was a little bitty boy. And you know, what's really, really funny is troubles and trials and tribulations are upon us now. Right. Yes, they are. And you know, I said and I often wondered when I was a kid would I ever live to see the day. And the way that the times, the signs of the times are going, I probably will. Unless the Lord takes me out before Him. But all I can tell you is this. Be ready. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Better be ready. And we sure better not have no respect to verse. That's right. We should greet one another all in one the same. Tell them the truth of God and that'll get us to heaven. Good to have them two to come in and the baby. Praise the Lord. But I'll tell you tonight that we need we need love in the church. That's right. We do. We not I'll tell you how we what we need to do is love God's people as He loved the church. We are the church. We are to have that type of love. Praise the Lord and tell them the truth. Love them. Try to get them saved. That's right. Now if they come in here, he used, he used uh, Linda Johnson. <laughs> I'm going to use Charles Miller. <laughs> if I get up behind this pulpit, I'm using the word I. You listen to what I'm saying. If I think that I'm the only preacher that they are in this church, come on, I'm wrong. That's right. I'm going to tell you something tonight. If God calls somebody to preach, they'll preach. That's right. They'll have the anointing of God. I don't have to go back and say, uh, you got that anointing, you preach. You will have that anointing. That's right. Beyond. And if you call on to preach, I'll tell you what the word says. Be instant in season and out of season. Never, I'll tell you what, we got so many people that think they're the only ones that they are. Amen. Because he wears a tie, got a big white shirt on. Big blue suede suit or whatever. Be good. There's no anointing in that. You may tell you where you find the anointing at is a preacher that prays fast, reads his word, Come on. and cares for his people. Yep. That's where it's at. That's right. Praise the Lord. I like to see this house full every night. Like for them to come and hear the truth. Because only the truth will make them free. That's right. Anybody preaching any other doctrine according to the word of God. Cursed. And this apostle doctrine, it's a lie. Cursed. I don't care whether they go to church or what they say. I'm just using the word of God. Right. If we don't believe in what that word says, We'll die and go to a devil's burning hell. That's right. 
And believe me, there's a lot of people preaching stuff that's not in the Word of God. That's right. I want to see the man that left here. I want to see the man when he comes back. And I want to hear him say, well done. Yes. My good and faithful servant. You be faithful if you think down me the ruler of me. I like to go to a church that's not a scared of what's out in the world. Right. I like to go to the church that believes in God. That's got their faith in God. Now listen, I'll tell you this world where they got their faith. They got it in doctors, Come on. lawyers, governors. Right. The governor says put the mask on. The first thing we'll do is wipe it off. Governor says take it off. We take it off. I'm going to tell you something. That is not putting your trust, faith in God. Praise the Lord. Now it tells teaches us we know we need, need to use wisdom in all things. Yep. But so many church people are so called church people but now they believe what somebody that lives three or four hundred miles away from you or out in California or the White House it's alright you can take your mask off put it back on it absolutely they are, they are trusting them as a God that's right that's what they're doing I don't trust God praise the Lord Praise the Lord. How many of us are Lord tonight? Amen. Let's give him a big hand. 